everyone, I hope you're well and having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are back after the weekend. I hope you had a great one and we are going to continue on with this X-Ray team that we started playing last week on the channel. And before we get into anything today, if you missed any of the episodes from last week and you'd like to check out those games because there were some incredible games with this team, go back up here, I'll link a card, you can catch up with those and then come into today's episode. But like I say, I'm going to continue on with it just because we had such a good run with it last week and we'll see how far we can actually take it this week so just to recap the team and it is down in the description below with a poker paste and a roll paste for you guys to take a look at in your own time maybe take away and try it out and if you do definitely let me know how you get on with it so the recap of the team we've got the mega requires we've got the xerneas the Lander Asterian, it's got the Z-Move there, we've got the Tapu Fini with the, the Wiki Berry, we've got the Incineroar, it's got the Figgy Berry as support there, the Fake Out Option, Snarl, U-Turn, just the standard Incineroar, and then the Serena there for that Queenly Majesty support that it gives the entire team, and we've had some really good success with it so far. So, without further ado guys, let's get some music on, and let's get into today's episode. If, as always though guys, if you enjoy this sort of content, please make sure to leave a like on the video, do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and leave your comments down in the comment section below because I love nothing more than hearing from you guys. So we're sitting on 12-1 with this team at the moment, let's lock some music in to kick us off today. League Tile Defense, it's always a good one to start with on a Monday morning and uh, we'll see how long it takes to find an opponent. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. If it does, I will just cut out and we'll come straight back to when we find our first opponent of the episode. And we have our first opponent of the episode. We've got Ching on a 15-28 rating and we'll hop straight into our team. <clears throat> I feel like this is a team that we've played already, but... Um... We might have played this with our Ultra Necrozma team, I think. Okay, so Ching is running a team of Umbrian, Ferrothorn, Gothitelle, Landorus Therian, Kyogre, and that Rayquaza. So we've got a Rayogre build here with the Gothitelle. It's going to have the access to trap us in the Umbrian. It's going to be uh, have access to foul play, to things like Snarl, to really disrupt um, our side of the field. Then the Landorus with the Intimidate support there and the Ferrothorn, which is going to be something really good to utilize within that Trick Room environment. So one thing we can identify that we definitely need here is the... <clears throat> excuse me, is the Xerneas. So good against the Umbrian and the Rayquaza, but then it will struggle a lot against the Ferrothorn in particular, and the Ferrothorn is obviously matched by the Kyogre, so we definitely want Incineroar. Not only for <clears throat> the Intimidate, but it's also a really nice pivot out for us. Although my opponent doesn't really have any fake out support, so we could potentially go Landorus as well for a quicker pivot out. Um, I'm going to lead Incineroar, and I'm going to bring Xerneas up top. No, I'm not going to bring Xerneas. I'm going to keep Xerneas for a late game. I'm going to bring Tapu Fini, and I'm going to bring Xerneas as well. Yeah, we'll lock in with those. And we'll get into this first one today. Should be a lot of fun. Um, Umbrian's always a funny Pokemon to play down against because it's one of those Pokemon that can take so many hits. It's just crazy bulky. So you've got to handle it pretty, pretty carefully. Um, and especially if we've got Rayquaza, we don't want to be in front of it. Plus two with our Sash broken because the foul play will just absolutely demolish us. <clears throat> we are going to see Gothitel and Kyogre. Okay. I don't mind this really at all. So we will get the airlock activated, and there's the Intimidate, and the next thing to come will be that Primal Reversion, revealing Primal Kyogre. Now one of the things we have access to here that we could do is fake out turn one into the Gothitelle, and just Sword Stance with Rayquaza. The problem doing that is <clears throat> we would lose our Incineroar potentially to a water spout. But the Kyogre's got to be scared of what the Rayquaza is going to be trying to do. Um, and Rayquaza, with a Sword Stance, will be able to deal with that Ferrothorn quite effectively. So I, I think we can get around doing this. So I am going to just do that. Fake out the Gothitelle and go for that Sword Stance. Because denying the Trick Room here is fine. Get a Finny in. Get a Terrain up. Then we have IC, uh, Heal Pulse support as well. Which is always good. So we'll Mega Evolve. 
and get rid of the rain, which is the big thing here for us. <clears throat> but the Kyogre is like an open target right now. I don't know if it wants to attack, to be honest. And there's Fake out there. So yeah, we do see the Protect. Okay, this makes the next turn a lot easier for us. Gothitel just protecting as well. Okay. Now we can't really deny the um, the Trick Room, but we can potentially just Dragon Ascent into the Gothitel slot. And I think what I will do is I'll go for a U-turn into the Kyogre. The Kyogre is likely to switch out here. No, actually, I'm going to go for a U-turn into the Gothitel. And I'm going to go for a Dragon Ascent. Like my opponent has to try and double protect it here. They lose their Trick Room. And without their Trick Room... Oh! Ally Switch! <laughs> okay. I don't mind that as well. Because, I mean, we get the Kyogre. They're obviously thinking we're, we're prioritizing that Kyogre more than anything else. Which I don't really care about the Kyogre. I want to stop the Trick Room. So, getting the Kyogre is just a bonus for us. And we'll be able to get Incineroar out of here. Um, with a U-turn, which is nice. And get Tapu Fini onto the field. Although, hmm, do we go for that? Yeah, I think so. Gothitelle's definitely in range for a Dragon Ascent now. The problem is the Protect play that they can make now, and we have to be very careful. Maybe the Landorus comes in. The strong winds will be protecting it a little bit from these icy winds. An icy wind's not really the predominant thing that we want to be going for here because if they do go trick room, there's the ferrothorn. Uh, okay. Now I still am prioritizing the Gothitelle here, um, so I am going to chase it down with the Dragon Ascent. It is risky because we could get Jarabald in the process, but I can't allow this trick room to get set up. That's the one thing that we need to deny. Um, yeah, not ally switch him. We are going to be able to remove remove the Gothitelle. And then I think the next turn we can... We've, unless my opponent's got any sort of priority, we should be able to remove the, the Ferrothorn pretty easily. We'll get a Scald into the Ferrothorn with our Tapu Fini. The unfortunate thing is here we were trapped in. We can't switch out, uh, but we can now. Obviously, we can get Incineroar onto the field. We're going to see Jarabol here yeah, into Ray. It will take us down to our Sash. But we're still in pretty good shape going into this next turn. Depends what comes in, of course. It is the opposing Rayquaza, which is interesting. Um, it has got extreme speed as well, which we need to be very, very careful for. Um, okay, what we'll do is we'll switch in Incineroar, and we will go for a Protect with Rayquaza. It's not over by any means because we're definitely in extreme speed range. We could lose a speed tie. What we want to try and do is hope that Ferrothorn protects this turn. So we get Incineroar in. We can fake out or pressure the Rayquaza the next turn with the with a Protect. Or just fake out into it to prevent it moving. And then we get the Dragon Ascent into the, the Ferrothorn. And a plus two. I mean, there's not really much my opponent can do to get around that. So we'll get Incineroar in. And there's the Rayquaza on the opposite side of the field going for the Mega Evolution. It is on minus one as well, which is super helpful. We'll protect. Do we see the extreme speed? I mean, you probably have to to protect the Ferrothorn. Ooh, Dragon Dance. Ah, that's nice. No protect from the Ferrothorn, though. And there's a Power Whip. Yep, into the finish slot. <clears throat> That's fine. So we'll fake out the Rayquaza. We'll go for that Dragon Ascent into the Ferrothorn and just try to remove it. But we'll likely see a double protect here. But we're not losing anything by doing this this turn. It just puts us in a worse position going into the next turn. The Rayquaza does protect on that. 
and a potential fake out. No protect from the Ferrothorn, so we should be able to remove it. We will lose our Rayquaza in the process, but that's fine. I don't mind about that at all. Um, so yeah, we'll get the knockout. We'll get the <laughs> the Iron Barb damage will take us down, unfortunately. But Ray's picked up three KOs in this match, so it's done more than enough work. The return for that KO. Come back, have a rest, Ray. Um. And what we'll do is we'll bring in Tapu Fini here. We'll be able to use utilize the Icy Wind. We'll switch Incineroar out. I think the Fini is the more likely target for my opponent because of the threat of the Icy Wind. Um, and we'll bring in Xerneas, which will allow us the next turn to bring in the Incineroar once again. And then we have the Fake Out Geomancy set up, which we should... And there's the Forfeit. Okay, so... Still, even at that point, it's good to start thinking about how you're going to close down a match, what your options are, and even switching in at those points. It's really important just to remember what you're doing there and why you're switching it in, even if it is just to put pressure on for a certain reason. So, very good game to my opponent, and uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to load up so we can get into our next one. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's it's always important. Like even Like every step of every single turn is so important. Just to remember that, like, you know, what you're doing in those matches, like, you're always going, aiming for a goal at the end, and the goal is the win. And how can you do that? How can you beat that last Pokemon? What can you do with the resources you've got left to set up that win condition? So you're not freelessly just willy nilly just thinking, oh, I've got this in the back, I'll just bring this in, and everything will be fine. You're really methodically thinking everything out, and that's what you need to try and get yourselves into the rhythm of. So we'll go into our next game hop in. and hop into team preview here. We've got a really nice team here of Groudon, Rayquaza, Bronzong, Incineroar, Tabacoco, and Cartana. I really like the look of this team. It's really nice. Um, something I feel like I would like to play. Maybe we will at some point. So, yeah, what we're going to do here, we've got the restricted combination of Groudon and Rayquaza. Not something you see so common. Um, Bronzong is going to be a speed control element on the team with Trick Room, probably to support the Groudon more than anything else, potentially the Incineroar. And then the rest of the team with the Tabacoco, Cartana, and Rayquaza is the fast mode of the team. Tabacoco there, I think from the vulnerability, the, this team's kind of got against Ultra Necrozma in general. Uh, Tapcoco might be Farium. Uh, you can't discount the Cartana being that, but it's likely to have Tailwind if nothing else is a kind of second mode speed control. The thing that we identify straight away is that we need Intimidate support um, and as much of it as we can because everything on this team barring really the Tapcoco are physical attackers. Maybe the Groudon special, but I don't know. I think what we'll do is lead off with Incineroar and um, do we bring... Could we bring Serena here? I don't think we could, to be honest. Um, I'm going to bring Finny. And then Ray and Xerneas in the back. And we'll jump straight <coughs> into this one. So good luck to my opponent. And hopefully it's another cracking match for us to feature on the channel. Oh, so I think what we'll do with the team, we'll play this team until... Well, it depends how it goes. If we're, if we're continuing on the winning streak, I'll just keep playing it till the end of the week because there's no point of putting a team down when it's doing so well. We can really climb up the ladder and, and see where we can go with it. That's always the nice thing about it. Um, and we can always feature different XY builds on our streams and then I'll pull them onto the channel as and when. We are going to see the Groudon and the Cartana come out for my opponent. Um... We get the Intimidate onto both targets, which is very useful. Unless, like I say, the Groudon is a special variant, which very well could be. And we do see a Primal Revert. And the Desolate Land activates. So, what are we going to do? What's a Cartana going to do? Could it have Bloom Doom? That's something we need to, need to be wary of. Uh, I don't want to just let the... I don't want to let the Groudon get a free Precipice Blades off, and I don't really want to take too much damage with our Tapu Fini from the Cartana at the moment, so... I could, could Icy Wind, but if the Cartana Tail wins, we're not really doing much but breaking a Sash there, which could be useful for later in the game. Um, 
And we will take, we will take, um, uh, well, we'll take a Leaf Blade. We won't take a Bloom Doom. I'm going to just switch in the Red Quasar here. I think just to be safe. Better being safe than sorry. Grad, I'm going to switch out. <clears throat> Takes the sunlight with it, and Rayquaza going to hit the field. Okay. That icy wind would have been really good, wouldn't it? Hmm. But we do break a potential sash on this Rayquaza, which is which is really nice. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the Cortana does. Maybe it protects here. Not protect though. And there's a tailwind. Okay. So, I think what we'll do straight away is... Hmm. We really want to get some damage onto this Rayquaza. Um, I feel like you double up into that slot, really. Uh, but the Tailwind being up kind of puts my opponent off, I guess. So we could potentially just Dragon Ascent into the Rayquaza. Um, I don't really want to lose Incineroar. That's why I feel like I want to U-turn. Um, but then again, I'd rather bring in Finny to have the Incineroar the next turn. Um, if it goes down. And maybe just protect with Rayquaza here. Stall out a turn of this Tailwind. The only issue is, we, by doing this, we're kind of allowing my opponent to um, to get a sword stance off here with the Rayquaza, which is not ideal, which is what we could have done here as well. Um, and because our sash isn't broken, it might have been an idea to do that, but it's by the by now, we've clicked in, we've done, so we'll have to make do. The opposing Rayquaza is going to go for that Mega Evolution. I wonder if it just attacks into our slot. It might do. It could be banded as well. You never know. So there we go. There's the Delta Stream. Uh, we'll protect. Just keep our Rayquaza. It's uh, going to be one of the most important members of this game for us. We do just see a Dragon Ascent. It's actually into the Tapu Fini. Okay, we will take this. <clears throat> this will just proc our Wiki Berry. Unless it is... Ugh. Banded, which it is. Okay. Band Rayquaza. No, we don't want Xerneas in. We definitely don't want Xerneas in. Um, hmm. We're just going to get faked out, aren't we? So. I feel like we have to just Ah, uh, this is the problem. I want to try and play a bit. I'm going to U-turn out on the Incineroar, and I'm going to switch. No, I can't. I can't do it. I have to just fake out the opposing Rayquaza, really. Um, Mega Revolve. And I'll try and get the Dragon Ascent onto it. I just don't feel like we're going to be able to do it. And then it's going to come down to a speed tie. Hmm. Band Rayquaza. He pulls an Incineroar into us. Breaking our sash. And there's the Rayquaza. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think we've got to we've got to let Xerneas take a big Dragon Ascent here. Which is not ideal, but Rayquaza is a most important thing. Especially against the Groud on the Cortana that my opponent's got on the back. Like, Xerneas can't really deal with them as well as what Rayquaza can. <clears throat> if we can get another U-turn out with Incineroar here, get Rayquaza back onto the field at the end of this, this these Tailwind turns, then... Maybe we've got a way to kind of come back into this. Especially knowing that that, that Rayquaza is is banded and it's locked it can't protect so being able to utilize these fake outs is a lot easier okay <clears throat> here we go this isn't taking that not too bad to be honest what's the incineral gonna do just a u-turn where are you going into maybe groudon and cortana well cortana is likely to have the sash now that the requ the requaza doesn't 
So we can potentially. No, oh, it's the Groudon. Okay. I don't mind that too much. Okay. So we'll get rare in. And it will come down to um, the speed tie here, I think. But I'm going to have to attack into the Rayquaza and switch Xerneas out to Incineroar. And try and cycle and intimidate onto this Rayquaza so we can nuke it. Because once their Rayquaza is gone, life becomes a little bit easier. Because then Ray is the fastest thing. Like, and if we can try and maneuver ourselves into a position where we can sword stance, especially, we can deal with that Groudon as well. It's such a threat at the moment. Uh, Band Rayquaza is really good. It is one of those things that does catch you out. Um, it does have its, its drawbacks because it's, it is prone to um, fake out disruption. That's why maybe Serena with a banded Rayquaza could be really strong. I'm going to see another Dragon Ascent here. Where are you going this time? Into our Rayquaza. You are minus two though right now. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's not ideal, is it? It's really not ideal. We just got to hope that the, uh, the Groudon goes for maybe a Fire Punch into... Our incineral. That would be the best outcome ever. If you attack into our Rayquaza, things get pretty sticky pretty quickly. You could even see Stone Edge or something. Eruption. Oh! Can Ray take it? Nah, we can't. Oh man, that's not so good. Because Xerneas has taken so much damage already. Hmm. Yeah, special Groudon. We did mention that. It's going to be all about Xerneas now. Incineroar coming in. Hmm. We need to get the Geomancy up. We really do. Um, okay. Hmm. That's Geomancy. And let's go for a fake out into the Groudon. I think we just trade fake outs here though. I really do. Poison Incineral. Yep, faking us out. Fake them out. I think you've got to chase down the Xerneas though, if you're my opponent. So we could potentially go protect and snarl. But we need the Geomancy as soon as we can get it, really. And just got to hope that we can take... Yeah, I don't think there's much coming back in this one for us. Ah. The Band Rayquaza has just kind of cut through our team. We've seen an Earth Power. Okay. That takes Cinnaroar down. We'll get our Geomancy up, but I mean a Flare Blitz from the opposing in Cinnaroar. It is minus one. It's not going to leave us much health, though. I do <laughs> I do think the Cortana in the back is probably sashed. So, whether or not we can actually deal with it. Well enough is another thing. Ah, such a shame, but... Okay, it's a U-turn. That's, that's better than a Flare Blitz. I just don't... I just don't see us being able to deal with this Groudon the health that it's at right now and even the Incineroar as well like everything on my opponent's team is gunning for Vazernius if we, f if we had full health I'd feel so much more confident about this um, but <laughs> I really just don't um, I guess we Moonblast into the Cortana and if it's not Sash then we take it down and then hope that the Groudon can't take us down with our, our boosts but gonna see Sashed. There we go. So very good game to my opponent, and that is going to end up today's episode and a little win streak that we're on, which is fine. It's always going to come to an end. And I did say at the start it was a team I like the look of, and it is a team I like the look of. It's really strong. Um, 
and uh, just massive props to my opponent. That was a really enjoyable game. A bit unfortunate that we couldn't come out of it on the better end of it, but um, in a best of one situation, I can't be too damn beat when something like um, Banded Raid does catch you off guard and then obviously the Tailwind support from the Cartana. By the time we stalled that out, we'd taken so much damage, lost so much resource, so we had hardly anything left to kind of come back in the game. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things. So very good game to my opponent. And uh, I hope you guys at home enjoyed the episode. So we'll wrap it up there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back for another episode of our VGC 2019 Battlespot series tomorrow. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.